in your hand and hold it for the rest of this sermon. Minister Shemika will take our kids. I gave her a word at, before service that after the day we have children church every Sunday. Say every Sunday. Every Sunday. So if you're a minister, the leaders that are not here, get ready. You're about to teach. Amen. Tell your neighbor no excuses. Uh, no excuses. If I don't have none, don't you have none. You say amen. Amen. So get ready because we're going to pour into our children so we can reach the community. And we've got some work to do. Amen. Mm, amen. Everybody got a coin in their possession? Yes, sir. I don't care. The quarter. Hold your coin up. Let me see if you have it. Okay, good. Everybody's here. You have a coin, Sister Destiny? I can see you. Okay, I'll wait till you get a coin. Sister Judy, do you have a coin? If your hand's not lifted, you don't have a coin. My message has to do with the coin that's in your hand. Yeah, just hold on to your coin. That's your coin. That's a coin that you can't spend, so make sure after service you don't spend it. That's your coin that's going to go home. And you're going to probably get a drill hole in it and put it around your neck. <laughs> so you won't forget what I'm about to tell you. Today. Can you say amen? amen? So please hold that coin out. <laughs> amen. amen. And don't everybody grab a penny either. Just keep what you got. Whatever you grab, that's what you have. Amen. 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 All right. Hold it up again. Let me see if you got your coin. I need to see everybody. Sister Judy, do you have a coin? I need your hand up. You have a coin, Keenan? You, you need to get a coin. You're a young man. You need a coin. You need your Bible in your lap. Somebody help him out. Keenan, quiet. Get a coin. Here you go. Put a Bible in your lap. If you don't have a Bible, somebody get him a Bible. You need a Bible. Yeah, you need a Bible. Your kid, parents, should make sure you have a Bible. You need a Bible. Amen? All right. Okay, everybody got a coin? All right, here, here it is. Here it is. Here's my, my opening note. Most people think uh, that wisdom and knowledge are the same thing. Here it is. But actually, there are two different sides of the same coin. That's why you have that coin in your hand. Don't spend that coin, please. Knowledge is the facts known by a person, and wisdom is the combination of experience and knowledge. With the power of applying them with soundness of judgment. Knowledge is gathered from learning and education, while wisdom is gathered from day-to-day -day experiences. Can you say amen? Amen. Knowledge is simply having clarity of facts and truth, while wisdom is the practical ability to make consistent good decisions in life. Here's a confession right here. How many of you made some bad decisions? Oh, my goodness. In your life. Amen. We must understand that we have made some very bad decisions because of a lack of knowledge. Mm. Mm. And I said it last week and I'll say it again. Hosea 4, 6 tells us, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And they did not complement, the knowledge did not complement the wisdom that they needed on a daily basis. Sometimes we make bad decisions because we don't have the knowledge to complement the wisdom that we need to go through what we're going through in our life. Right, right. Basically, when dealing with something or dealing with a thing, we don't have the knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, listen to me carefully. If you don't have the knowledge, then don't move. Right. And if you don't have the wisdom, then don't make a decision. Can you say amen? amen. I'm going to say that again. If, if you don't have the knowledge, then don't move. And if you don't have the wisdom, don't make a decision. Because all of us have said to ourselves, I shouldn't have never done it. Right. Exactly. I should have just stayed where I was. I shouldn't have never moved in that direction. Do I have a witness in here? Yes, sir. Knowledge is like this. Knowledge is like measuring that the desert is 12 miles long. Mm -hmm. But wisdom, first lady, is knowing to pack enough water sure. to make it through the journey. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But how many went into some stuff and didn't pack enough Jesus right. for the journey? Right. Yeah. 
Oh, that means the claps right there. Y'all should have caught that right there in the spirit, amen, because you knew where you was going, but you didn't have enough supplies to get you through that part of your journey. Yes, sir. In our text today, I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Oh, I've got a good time. I've got about 25 minutes. I should be done. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter number, God bless you, minutes of glory, but you can remain seated in the presence of the Lord. We've stood enough on today. I respect you honoring the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verses 1 through 6. Say amen if you have it. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Say amen if you have it. Amen. I'm going to wait to everybody. I can see y'all like you can see me, so when everybody say amen, then I'm going to continue. Say amen. Amen. Okay, everybody's got it. I'm reading from the NIV version. Uh, this is Paul talking. He says, I hope you will put up with me in a little foolishness. Yes, please put up with me. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ. So that I might present you as a pure version to him. Verse number three. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Verse number four. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we well, preach, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you receive, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. Verse five, I do not think I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. Verse number six, key text, I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. Can you say amen? amen? Paul is defending and he's talking to the Corinth church about the serpent who has disguised himself mm -hmm. into deceiving and tempting the people of God to reject God. Right. Now let's just, just do a little, little testimony again uh, or, or just a little transparency. How many will confess that sometimes, Pastor, I have been deceived and tempted yes, by somebody who didn't look like Jesus amen. Yeah. Amen. and caused me to reject God right. if just for a day. <laughs> our world, our world that we live in is full of isms mm -hmm. and full of cults, yeah. and Terrence, yeah. and ideologies, mm -hmm. all proclaiming to provide the way to God. Mm -hmm. And in other words, the, the, the Krishna and, and, and the Buddha and, and the Muhammad, those are all ideologies yeah. that we are not to follow because we belong to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul was struggling with those who were being misled by God's own people. Are you with me right yes, now? Sir. The church at Corinth was a very weak church at this time. Mm -hmm. Surrounded in the Sigourney by idolatry and right. immorality. Right. So they struggled with two things. They struggled with their faith and they struggled with their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now how many, without you putting yourself on blast, how many of you know somebody that's saved and struggling with their lifestyle? Uh, well, I need you to lift your hand because yes, you know sir. somebody. I raise both my hands because right, I know a whole right, lot of yeah. people that are struggling with their lifestyle. So when they struggle with their life for now, listen, their faith is stagnated in God. Because Jesus said in Hebrews 11, 6, that without faith it's impossible to please God. He said in 1 Corinthians 5 that we are to walk by what? By faith and not by sight. And sometimes we are defeated in our life. Out because we're looking at the thing in the natural, but will somebody give God a praise that after the day I'm going to change to the spiritual realm and look at this thing the way Jesus looks at it so I can grow in my faith. Are you with me here? Yes, sir. And in today's society, I have to concur that many believers are struggling. Mm -hmm. yeah. I put my church on blast. I love my church. Right. Hallelujah. My church is full, but I got believers that God has put under my care that are struggling in their faith. Yes, yes. And they struggle in their faith because they're struggling in their lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. 
It's not only here, but it's across this world. It's across this nation. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, he said, In the last days, men will become lovers of themselves. People are loving God more, loving the world more than they love God. And the Bible goes on to say that their hearings is wax cold, that their conscience is burned with a searing iron. Somebody give God a pray that I don't want to be in that number. I want to be somebody that's sold out for Jesus. I want to be like William and God saying, I give myself away. Is there anybody in here that will give God a give myself away praise? A living sacrifice pray. Oh, some of y'all not praising the right because if you really love God, you'll give him an unadulterated, uninhibited, a crazy praise that I'm ready to step in my faith and live the lifestyle God has called me to live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you right now. Tell him back, no, he's talking to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I said in last week in Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But, but fools Fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. And we lose, when we lose our fear in 2 Timothy chapter 1, are we there? I think all it was ahead of me. And I'll say this, when we lose our fear, our knowledge becomes the answer in 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Put it on the screen for me if you would, all you. The Bible says that Paul is talking to his understudy Timothy. I want you to follow me on the screen if you would. He says, for God has not given us the what? The spirit of fear, fear and timidity or the loss of courage. Right. Mm -hmm. But of power uh -huh. and love and self-discipline. So now you know Come in on. the original language, King James, sound mind is self-discipline. But then he says in verse number eight, so never be ashamed. And I underline the shame because some of us are ashamed of who we belong to. Oh, do I got a witness in here? Yes, Why you say that, Pastor? Because you get around and never say friends and never testify. You never witness. You never evangelize. You never tell them who you belong to because you want to fit on in. Is there any glee clubs in here that all you want to do is fit in with those who are going where you want to go for just that day? But after that day is over, you put your cape back on and say, da -da -da -da, I'm super Christian again. Good. He says, so never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. Right. And Paul said to Timothy, and don't be ashamed of me. Watch this. If you see the text, he said, don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. Paul wrote the letter to Timothy while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was incarcerated. Right. Right. If he is incarcerated, to still have the tenacity to spread the knowledge and the power of God What's wrong with us who ain't locked up in San Quentin, ain't locked up in Folsom, ain't locked up in Bruceville? When you give God a praise, I got to unlock the gates in my mind so I can be and say and do everything that God has called me to do and walk in his knowledge and his power and not in my own wisdom. He says, he says, I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, here it is, Minister Gloria, he told Timothy, be ready to suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most of believers today say, listen to me, they get messed up because they suffer in their own knowledge. He's ready to yeah. suffer. He's ready. They don't suffer in Jesus' knowledge. He told Timothy in 1 Timothy, he said, look, if you want to reign with Christ, you got to know how to suffer with Christ. Right. Do I got a witness right. here? Yes, he sir. said that in the book of Matthew, in chapter 5, he said, you and I are going to suffer some persecution. Right. How many know you know somebody talking about you right, right now? now right I raise both my hands. Right now. But that's okay because I'd rather suffer for Christ than to suffer for the enemy. Do I got a witness in here? Because I don't know about y'all, but all of us when we were serving the devil, we all said that little cliche. I don't care what they say about me. I'm going to do what I do. When you say that for Jesus today, that I don't care what they say about me, I'm still going to be a witness. I'm still going to be a testimony. I'm still going to walk in his knowledge and his power. I don't care what you say. Yeah, take your index finger. Tell somebody, I don't care what you say. I serve a living God. Well, y'all not catching me this morning. 
He said, be ready to suffer me for the sake of the good news, the good news of the gospel. Look what he says in verse number nine. Key text. He said, for God saved us and called us to do what? Live a holy life. Tell your neighbor, I got some work to do. Hallelujah. If I be transparent with me and be with you, some of us need to get a little more holy. Can you say amen? We need to get a little more holy. Yes, sir. Yes, and don't sir. care what the naysayer says or the right, haters. Right, right. Because every time you got a hater around the corner, there's a congratulator. Do I got a witness right. in here? That congratulator is called the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost would approve your walk, who cares what they say? Who cares what you say? Throw the rocks if you want to. I'm going to cry out to Jesus because if I don't, the rocks going to beat me. Do I got a witness right. in here? Right. Say what you want to say. Call me holy then now. Call me holy. Do I have a witness yes, in here? Sir. He says, he said, look what he said. He said he did this not because we deserve it. Tell your neighbor, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve, it. You don't deserve, it. You don't deserve, it. You don't deserve this salvation, and neither do I. I don't. But because, here it is, well, that was his plan. God had a plan for you. And that's related to Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5, I knew you in your mother's womb. Well, Tell your neighbor, he knew you was going to be saved. So what's your problem? How come you can't get holy? How come you can't live right? How come you can't talk right? How come you can't live do right? How come you can't serve right? Why? Because we're missing God's knowledge. Where's the knowledge, Pastor? It's in the word of God. Jesus said, when I be lifted up, I come up with all power in my hand. Anybody want the power of God in your life in order for you to get it? You got to get in his word. And when you get in his word, that Holy Ghost will show up and it do you with power and you'll be able to testify. You'll be able to preach. You'll be able to see. You'll be able to go to the highways and the byways and compel people to come and taste and see how good God is. If God been good to you, I tell you to lick your lips like he's Kentucky Fried Chicken and say, ooh, that tastes real good. Lick your lips like he's Taco Bell. Ooh, that tastes so good. Lick your lips like he's in and out Burger. Ooh, that tastes so good. Lick your lips for Jesus. Oh, come on now, come on. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. amen? He said that was his plan from the yes, beginning. Yes, sir. From before the beginning of time. Mm. If you look at the text. To show us what? His grace through Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Point number one. Point number one. I must not allow myself to become intimidated by what I'm going through. Well, somebody better say amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. You remember what he told Timothy? He said, look, man, I didn't give you that spirit of fear. Right. Anytime you become intimidated by what you're going through, you have nullified God's power and given it over to the enemy. And God cannot move in your life. God cannot turn a situation around because you're not walking in the dynamite, the dunamis power of God. Tell your neighbor, after the day, I'm going home, I'm about to blow some stuff up. Oh, y'all don't say that to each other. Some of y'all scared, amen. So that's scared because I'm looking at you while you're looking at me. But you got to say it with authority. Tell them, after the day, I'm going home and blow some stuff up. Matter of fact, tell them, I'm going to start with me. I got to blow me up and be made over all over again. Because there's some stuff in me that ain't right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. He says, I must not allow myself to become intimidated by what am I going, what I am going through. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Hallelujah. Paul is saying chapter number 11, verse 1. He says, I want you to put up with my foolishness. In other words, Paul is saying, I want you to put up with me for a little while. Mm -hmm. And how many would confess I've had to put up with some foolish people right. yes, sir. for a little while? Come on, Rick, lift your hand. I need some witnesses in here because you've been foolish too. Yes, sir. Because Paul had to remind these people who he was. And he had to do this, listen to me, to silence the false teachers that were in the Corinthian church. Because sometimes, look at your name and say, everybody that come in the church ain't saved. 
some come with a different agenda to deceive the very elect so that he can get the elect out of the house. Look at your neighbor and say, watch, for the, watch out for the whispering ear, the whispering mouth, the whispering conversation that blows sweet nothings in your ear to try to get you to leave the power and knowledge of God. And he had to tell them, look what he had to tell them. He said, look, he had to tell them that I'm jealous for you because he wanted their love to be for Christ and Christ alone. He said in verse number two, I am jealous for you with a godly, not a, not a natural, a godly jealousy. Can you say amen? amen? I put me on blast. Sometimes I'm jealous with the people in my church because I know that they feel and pray or fall and pray to the enemy. So I'm mad because the devil got them. And Jesus don't. That's what Paul is saying. Amen. So look at somebody tell them just because you don't see them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to pray for them. Y'all didn't say that right. When you don't see them, you need to pray for them. Amen. That the enemy release them out of his hands. And you got to plead the blood of Jesus on them that they will become saved. In other words, Paul wanted them to stay a virgin. And if Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and we are the bride. Yes. And Paul was sold out for him. Why wouldn't he be jealous? In 1 Corinthians right. chapter 1, let the screen for me, on it, verse number 18 and 19. You don't have to turn there. I put these on there for you personally. He says, Paul is saying, the message of the cross, here it is, is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. Now I got a witness. Can y'all just help me? Is anybody in here headed for destruction? Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nobody. Everybody's good. Amen. Amen. He says, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. In other words, what God wants you to do and what Paul is telling you, I want you to tap in. Tell your neighbor, tap in to the power of God. Tap into the power of God. Oh, y'all didn't say that right. In other words, for you to tap into the power of God, you got to do things. You got to stay in your prayer life and you got to stay in his word. Do I got a witness in here? Because if you miss one without the other, you're going to nullify the power of God that wants to move in your life. Amen. So when people see you and you show up, they say, oh, I know who that is. That's Sister Jamie. She got endued power. Oh, I know who that is. That's Sister Trudy. Watch out, man. She know that word. Do I got a witness in here? You want people to say that about you so they'll know they can't bring you no mess. If you still got people bringing you mess, you're not walking in the power and the knowledge that God has called us to walk into. Tell your neighbor, get rid of that stuff. He says in verse 19, first lady, he says that the scriptures say, here it is, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Some of us are too wise in our own mindset. We think we know it all. I got it all together. Leave me alone. Who do you think you are? They are not in the knowledge and the power of God. Think that they got it all together. Look what he says. He says, and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. Some people are too smart for their own good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. They used to tell that old saying in the Kojic church. They said, you're so heavenly minded, you ain't no earthly good. Oh, do I got a witness in here? Listen, when I met my wife, let me tell you, I was stuck on soup. I try to, I try to bring my wife to heaven all by myself. Quote scripture after scripture after scripture. And guess what? Guess what saints? When I was quoting scripture to her, guess what I was doing? I was pushing her away. I bet hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to hear what you're saying. Right. They want to see how you live. They don't want to hear what you say. They want to see how you're living. Because if you're living right, if you're living right, somebody tell you this, your light will shine. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Do I got any bright lights in here? <laughs> give God a bright light praise. <laughs> oh, give God a 30 watt, a 60 watt, a 100 watt praise. <laughs> then I'm ready to shine bright for you. Oh, y'all not praising it right. I need some bright lights in here. Oh, I'm not, not that light. <laughs> some holy lights. We give God a jump of praise and say, you know what, Pastor? I'm going to get brighter than I was before. I'm not going to depend on that natural light. I'm going to depend on the light of the world who come to save the man from his sin. Somebody give God a praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And sometimes in verse number three, verse number three, I'm just about done. He said, I'm going to get a point and I'm going to be done. He said, he Paul said, but I'm afraid that just as Eve, remember I talked about Eve last week. Eve was deceived by that serpent's cunning. He said, your mind may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. The Bible calls us a slave unto righteousness. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians right. chapter 6 right. that your body is not your own. It belongs to the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Romans 12 that you beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Somebody give God a service praise in here. Wherever he needs me, I'm going to serve. Wherever he wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Wherever he wants me to go, I'm going to go. Wherever he wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Somebody give God a do it praise in here. But we got to be careful. We got to be careful who we listen to. Come on. Where are we going? Teach, teach, and what is coming out of our mouth? Mm. Yes, yes. Paul, in other words, listen to me carefully. He did not want them to lose their single-mindedness for Christ. Yes. In other words, you cannot serve Christ and have this, that, and the other on your mind at the same right. time. That's true. That's yes. true. Good Keeping Christ first in your life can be very hard. I tell your neighbor, it's hard sometimes. It's hard. Come on, tell them again, it's hard. It's hard, it's hard. Uh, it's hard because of this, Sister Jamie. We got too many distractions. Right. Yeah. Yes, and when you got too many distractions, they come to sidetrack right. you. Right. Watch this, point number two. Do not allow your mind to be overcrowded with unhealthy thoughts. Sometimes we as yeah. sick as can be, not because of what, the, what came upon me, just because of what I'm thinking. Can you say amen in here? Amen. Do not allow your mind to become overcrowded with what unhealthy Healthy, thoughts. Unhealthy thoughts. That's what happened to Eve. Mm. I believe, this is just me talking, I'm paraphrasing the text, but I believe in Genesis, I believe Eve stood there, sat there, and just looked at that tree. Right. The enemy didn't come right away. She just looked at it. Tell your neighbor, the longer you look, the quicker you gonna be distracted. <laughs> but you're gonna put that thing in your head, and that head is gonna overcrowd everything in your life that's good in your mind. And you're gonna start leaning on your own knowledge except the knowledge of God. Crowded places in our life. Some of us live, I'm gonna help y'all right now. Some of us got crowded glove compartments in your car. <laughs> Some of us got crowded closets right now that need cleaning out. You know what I mean? Some of us drunk in our car about as crowded as can be. Got some stuff in there, been there for two years. Do I got a witness in here? Some ladies in this sanctuary got some purses that are crowded. When you go to look for something, it takes you 20 minutes just to find it. And then right there, if you just clean the thing out, you'll be able to find it. Some of us got dirty, filthy, crowded cars. Don't want to get nobody a ride. Not because you ain't got no gas. Not because your car not running good. It's just crowded with too much junk. Some of us got bedrooms. I don't live in none of y'all, but your bedroom is overcrowded. You got to tiptoe just to get to the bathroom. Oh, do I got a witness in here? Do I got a witness in here? Some of you, listen, some of you wash clothes, you dry them, and you throw them on the bed. They stay there for weeks at a time. Do I got a witness? Yep. When you go to get in the bed, you push it with your feet. Yes. And they go on the floor. You get up in the morning, they sit on the floor. A preacher better than y'all respond to tell you, neighbor, he in your house right now. He in your house. <laughs> Some of us got crowded garage. I'm a living witness for that. I'm trying to clean mine out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me clean my garage now. My garage is overcrowded. Lord, let not my mind be like my garage. Do I got a room in here? Got some stuff in your garage. You don't know need to be out a long time ago. Oh, I need somebody to agree with me right now. Don't y'all leave me out here by myself. Some of you lied. Some of you got some stuff you know you should have got rid of a long time ago. And that's how your mind is sometimes. Amen. You've been overcrowded with space. Watch this, Minister Gloria. Watch this. Watch this, Minister Terrence. When your mind is overcrowded, you have no room for new manifestation of what God wants to show wow. you. That's good. That's good. Because yeah, you got so much clutter in your mind. Do I have a witness yes, in here? You do. Yes, you do. 
Because you got this old stuff. God bring you a new manifestation and you go, oh, I got something in the garage will work for that. No, you got to be like David when he went against a Goliath. Saul tell him, won't you try this armor? So David said, no, 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 man. I'm not taking that old armor into this new battle. Somebody give God a praise and after the day, I'm not taking anything old into my new battle. I got to take the new thing, the new God, the new purpose, the new illumination, the new manifestation of God. Can you say that? I'm moving like a man on fire. Point number three, I gotta give it to you right now. Point number three. Point number three. There is a spirit that will try to mislead you. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Can I help us today, Minister Terrence? Look at me, y'all. I don't care. It's okay to have unsaved friends, because Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I became all men, all things to all men that I might win some. But be careful that you don't hang on to them too long. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on. After you done done all that you can, after you done poured out all that you got, after you done shared with everything that you got, after you done gave them everything, no, no. it's time, sometime to just move away and get ready for that new person that God wants to bring your way. If not, that very person will mislead you into doing something God did not call you to that do. Is good. That's real. In other words, listen to me carefully. You got to be careful you don't partner with the un unsaved uh, deals or ideals or contractions. You got to make sure you don't, you don't be a part of another man's sin. Mm. My God. I do my better God. sitting all by myself. I don't need no help. Right. right. <laughs> Hallelujah. On, but man. some of us are misled because it looks so good. I'm closing with this. Go to Acts. I go to Acts chapter 19. I want you to get ready for your life group this lesson this week because this lesson is going to bless you. And I'm hoping the facilitators would do a great job in bringing out this lesson because it's great for all of us. But I want us to see something in Acts chapter number 19 before I dismiss us. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say amen when you get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you point number four. Point number four. Right now, write this in. Point number four. Uh, may my knowledge of God's word so surpass any shortcomings I may have or may be struggling with. In other words, whatever you're struggling with, put a word on it. Right. Thank you, First Lady. Put a word on it. If you can't put a word on it, it's the enemy. Because the Bible says in the book of James, chapter number four, even the devils believe and tremble. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse number 19 and 20, he told the disciples, Brother Hodges, I give you power over the serpent, over the scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. The reason why we get harmed is we walk in our own knowledge and our own wisdom. And God is nowhere to be found. Can you say amen? amen? Watch this. Watch this in Acts chapter 19. Say amen if you have it. Amen. Say amen again if you have it. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. I want you to get this text right here. The Bible says in verse number 13. The Bible says some Jews, some Jews, say some Jews. Some, Jews. some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke or to promote the name of the Lord Jesus. Over those who were demon possessed. Look at me. Look at me. Everybody, look at me. Look at me. If you ain't got no power, leave that devil alone. Right. Right. I know that. <laughs> Say that again. I wish I had everybody here. Yeah. Look, at me. look at me again. If you ain't got no power, uh -huh. if you ain't got no knowledge, yes, leave sir. that devil alone. Uh -huh. Right. All right. Amen. amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Watch this. Read. Watch this. He says. He says. He says. He says. He says. He says they would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Look at me again. Look, look, look at me. Look, look, look. You, you can't take my anointing and go deal with a crack at it. Come on, come on. Only I can do that. Because I know where they're coming from. You don't know where they're coming from. But you got to find out where you come from and what you come out of and take that knowledge and that power back into that scenario 
and cause them to come out of that miry clay, come out of that horrible pit, so they can be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost like you are. But some of us are hanging around some people who are deluding your power. Why would I get delivered from the club and go back to the club? Right. Oh, I gotta pitch this. Why would I get delivered from crack cocaine and go back to it? All right. Jesus. I guarantee you my wife will call the El Grove police and Sacramento police on me and the SWAT team because I try to get everything. Yes. I'm all by myself, but that's okay. All right. Look at your name saying such with some of you. <laughs> Yeah, some of y'all do casual, but, but you was messed up too. Tell up from the flow up. Oh, do I got a witness right here? Didn't have it all together. Tell somebody, remind them, I don't look like what the hell I've been through, baby. But I'm so glad I got a new praise in my lips and a new worship in my heart. That if Jesus can do it for me, oh, do I got a winner? He can surely do it for you. Watch what he says, first lady. I got to get through this so we can go home. He says, he says, watch what he says. He says, preachers, I command you to come out. Don't go ahead and you lose yourself. In verse 14, seven sons of Kiva or Seca or Kiva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Look at me again. Make sure you're saved. Right. Right. Before you try doing that. That's right. Make sure you have a good, healthy relationship with Jesus. Right. Before you try to go cast out a devil. Can I, can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? Can I, watch this, watch this. Verse 15, first lady, key text. Y'all pay attention. He said, one day, say one day. One day. The evil spirit answered them, not him, but them. Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? Uh -huh. <laughs> that devil bold. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And you try to cast him out, he looked you right now. Right. And then Jesus I know. Right. Oh, I know, but who? Can I paraphrase? Can I paraphrase on judgment? Who in the hell are you? Right, I right, 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 because the devil is bold right, like that. Right. He will walk right up to your grill and say, try me if you let me see how much power you really got. Right. Yes, he will. Or do I got a witness in here? Some of y'all looking at me starry eyed. But look, give God a praise. You've been in a fight like that. You've been in a fight with your family. You've been in a fight with your co-worker, a fight with your friends. But that devil don't care nothing about your anointing. He'll walk right up to you and demand right. and put a challenge to your spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, he will. Watch this. He calls you. Watch this. Watch this. He says, but who are you? Uh -huh. Watch this, verse 16. Then the man who had the evil spirit, here it is, first lady, jumped on them. In other words, this is the text. This is the text for the youth in the church of God, right? This is the text that they use for everybody. I want you to look at me and tell, say this to yourself. Say, be careful. Be careful. Who yeah. prays for you? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they might look anointed, <laughs> but they can put their hand on you. And that spirit is in that alcoholism, that adultery, that, uh, that fornication, that pornography, that whatever they're going through, it can either jump on you. Do I have a witness in here? That's why we need a prayer life. Amen. He said, watch this. He said, jump on, on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran to the house naked and bleeding. There were people in the church, first lady, who are bleeding. There are people in the church who are naked like Adam and Eve. Remember when they took the apple? Or the fruit, yes. the Bible says they saw and figured out that yeah. they were both right. naked. Oh, yeah, thank you, Minister. Mm. Their eyes was open. Yes, How many sir. need your eyes open? Come on, yes, just a little bit more. Yes, sir. Stand yes, to sir. your feet. I want to pray for you right where you are. Yes, Hallelujah. Lift your hands just as much as you can. You. I want to pray for you right where you are. I know the house, everybody's saved, yes. but I want to pray for you right where you are. You. Just for God to open up your eyes. If you ain't got nothing else, get that. God, open up my eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare blessings over your people today. Those that are in your presence. Father, that you will open up their eyes, that they will see that they are naked.